Book 1, The Railway Engines, Story 3, Edward, Gordon, and Henry. Henry had been left in the mainline tunnel for quite some time now. The tunnel had now deemed the nickname Henry's Tunnel. Kind engines like Edward would come through and whistle, Peep peep, hello. Others like Gordon would say, Poop poop, serves you right. Henry felt awful about himself. Some engines had forgotten about him. He was nearly a faded memory. He couldn't let anyone know he was there, of course. He had no steam to answer. His fire had gone out long ago. Sit and dirt from the tunnel's roof had spoiled his lovely blue paint and red stripes. He was cold and very unhappy. He regretted his actions and longed to pull a train again. Gordon had taken Henry's position as the express engine. After Gordon discovered Henry there a few weeks ago, he had made sure to rub the fact in. The express is a heavy, long train, full of important people like the director who had punished Henry. One day, Gordon was seeing how fast he could go. Hurry, hurry, hurry! He panted to the coaches. Trickety truck, trickety truck, trickety truck, truck. We're coming, coming, we're coming. coming! They panted back. Gordon's driver, Charlie Sands, checked the gauges, making sure Gordon wasn't overdoing himself. 45, 69. Ah, here we go. He pointed at a gauge, gesturing for the fireman to see. See that, Dave? His safety valve could bloody blow up! His fireman shook his head in disappointment. Charlie stuck his head out Gordon's window. Calm yourself, Gordon. You're going to blow yourself up into smithereens at this rate. You're not in a race. But Gordon wasn't listening. He was fixated on the tunnel in the far distance, thinking of what he was going to say to Henry next. He forced himself on, getting closer and closer, speeding through the junction station when suddenly, crack! Gordon was in close by a cloud of steam. He shuddered as he began to slow down. Whatever is happening, whatever is happening! He moaned as he came to a stop outside of Henry's tunnel. Henry, awoken by the sudden commotion, peered out of the tunnel to see a bright blue ball of steam idling next to him. The steam slowly died to reveal Gordon sulking. Whatever has happened to me, cried the big engine. You burst your safety valve, you blithering idiot, cried Charlie. Henry had begun to snicker at the sight of this. We were going so nicely too. To you, maybe. Ask your passengers. They must have been bouncing off the walls in the coaches, retorted his driver. Gordon blushed and produced more steam to cover himself. His guard and fireman were going into the coaches, checking everyone over. I never liked these big engines. Always going wrong. Send for another engine at once, he called to the guard who had begun to walk back to the last station. An engine like Edward would be nice, he murmured. Gordon felt most offended. Gordon had been carefully moved onto a siding, out of the way. A whistle sounded as Edward exited the tunnel and backed onto the coaches. Gordon suddenly bawled out in laughter. Oh ho ho ho! He won't be of use! He won't be able to move the train less than a meter! Right? Well, you just watched him prove you wrong, sneered Charlie. Edward waited to be fastened to the coaches. He gracefully poured sand onto the tracks and carefully began to pull the train. Nothing happened. Gordon laughed. Charlie facepalmed. Why don't we let Henry try? panted Edward. All eyes had suddenly fallen on him as a silent murmur filled the air. We'd have to ask the fat director. And I say we can, boomed a voice. The fat director had been surveying the events. He made his way over to Henry. Will you help us pull this train? he asked. Henry, without no hesitation this time, quickly answered, Yes, sir. And so, Gordon's driver and fireman lit his fire. A warmth crawled all throughout Henry like he had been able to catch a breath he had been looking for for a long time. A hand was placed on his regulator as he felt himself drifting back into the tunnel and out of the other side. He was dirty. Soot and cobwebs covered his now darkened boiler. He felt very stiff. His lovely blue paint with red stripes had now clearly faded. You go have a good run to ease your joints and find a turntable, said the director kindly. Henry did so. He thundered down the line looking for a turntable. When he did, he came back feeling much better. He backed down onto the front of the train with Edward. Peep peep, I'm ready, called Edward. Peep peep peep, so am I, replied Henry. We'll do it, we'll do it, puffed Edward. Pull hard, pull hard, chanted Henry. Pull hard, we'll do it, pull hard, we'll do it. The wheels slipped, creating showers of sparks, until suddenly, they had gained traction. The heavy coaches jerked forward and began to move, slowly at first, and faster and faster. 
We've, we've done, done it. it. We've, we've done, done it. it. We've, we've done, done it. it. They puffed together. Passengers leaned out of the windows, crying to the engines. The fact director leaned out of the window to wave to the engines. The train was going so fast and nicely, though, that his hat blew off and landed in a field, where a goat ate it for tea. The duo didn't stop until they reached Crovens Gate, a transfer station before Vickerstown. The passengers got off at the platform and sang their praises to the engines. The fact director thanked Henry and promised him a new coat of paint. Edward and Henry then went back to get Gordon. The three are now firm friends. Although they may get into their usual arguments, they are capable of settling their disagreements. Even if it means that one is retired, or one has to pull a train home on one cylinder, or even having to face your greatest moral. Oh, what am I saying? I'm spoiling the stories to come.